in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, there are three key words that God does on this Sabbath day. Verse, we'll jump to verse 3 here. Then God, what's the first key word? Blessed the Sabbath day. And second key word? Sanctified it because, excuse me, in it he was. Rested. Three key words. Blessed, sanctified, rested. God blessed it. He made it special. Now, in, in the New Testament, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who weep. In other words, happy are they. They have my blessing. God made the Sabbath day to be a, a happy day, a special day. Like Christmas. You know, the best way that Sabbath should be um, explain to people is it's like we have Christmas every Saturday and that's what my wife and I try to do sometimes it turns up a bit of a mess but we try and make Friday night a really good meal you know Karina spends time making it special we just put relaxing music on and we share with each other it's such a beautiful day Sabbath should be like Christmases that's if you've got a good Christmas at home otherwise think of something else the second thing he does is this crazy, well, not crazy word, but a technical word that I know Bindi would know, sanctified. It means make holy. Now, holy is one of those words that we don't quite sort of uh, understand. Um, holy to us can mean distant, cold, um, sort of afraid. But holiness has, has got a different meaning to it. Holiness is intimacy with God. There's a really good example. I won't turn to it at the moment. But have you heard of the story of Moses and the burning bush? Yes. What happened was Moses was walking along and all of a sudden he sees there's a bush burning, which probably isn't too strange in the desert on a hot day. But he looks, but the bush isn't being consumed. It's just burning and burning, but the branches are still there. And he thinks, well, this is really strange. I'm going to have a look. And so he walks towards, and that's when God speaks and says, Moses, you're standing on holy ground. Please take your shoes off. It was holy because God's presence was there. And Moses, in a way, was a little bit fearful, but it was an excited fearful. Being in the presence of God is like electrifying. I, I, I don't really know how to explain it in, in, in a in a way that's easy to understand unless you experience it yourself. But when you're in the presence of God, it is awe-inspiring. There's that little bit of sort of fear, but it's excitement. You're drawn to God because He's life and He loves you and He wants to share His love with you. And then the third thing, key word, is God rested on that day. Do you know how much I loved that word while I was at college studying and it was exam time and you really had to cram your brain with all this information because you've got an exam coming on Monday and it's Friday afternoon and all of a sudden the sun goes down then <sighs> God says thou shalt not work on the Sabbath. I'm not studying for 24 hours. Yes! <laughs> so wonderful and you know that when you do what God says he blesses you and look I didn't fail <laughs> I got through college and God blessed and God wants us to have that kind of rest you know God's Sabbath is a memorial of creation turn to me it's to remind us of creation we'll just quickly go to this text in Exodus chapter 20, remember before we looked at this verse that said remember because so often we forget this day and it tells us why we should remember. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall do labor, shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor your stranger who is in your gates. Why? For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. On the Sabbath day is the day we remember that not only did God create this world for us, He designed it for us, 
but he also created us and recreated us. Because remember we talked that once you accept Jesus as your saviour, you are a new creation. Well, this day helps us remind us of that fact. God says, as you rest with me, I will be everything that you need and I will keep recreating you and making you like Jesus himself. It's a memorial of creation. And you know, it's interesting, we find in Exodus, Ezekiel, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12, back to that text we were before, there's some additional information about the Sabbath. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12 remember i said before moreover i gave them my sabbath it's a gift to us but it says here to be a sign between them and me that they may know i am the lord that sanctifies them the sabbath is a sign of our relationship with him you know on my finger i got this piece of metal It's a piece of metal, I know, because if I drop it in water, it sinks. It's shiny, it's yellow. Why do I stick this piece of metal on my finger? You know, it's really not worth much. Um, When I got married, I was poor. (laughs) I think uh, I paid $60 for it, but this is the, the second rendition because I lost the first one while I was at the beach. And so I went to um, another place and I got another one. What is this? It's a wedding ring. To you, nah, you'd probably give me 20 bucks for it. To me, it's priceless. You know why it's priceless? Because it signifies my relationship with my wife. It's a sign that I am married. It's a sign to the other ladies out there, don't even come close. Because I'm attached and I love my wife. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, people get so caught up with the sign that they forget what the reason is. You know, it's like, and I really don't blame them, but when when the girls first get engaged and they've got this huge rock on there, do you know what they're doing? They're not telling people so much that they're engaged, but look what I got! Look, look, that's huge. Do you know how much it was? I'll not tell, I can't tell you, but boy, it's worth more than my car. Oh, he spent heaps of money. Look at it, it's beautiful. Someone says, what is it? (laughs) It's an engagement ring. What does that mean? Oh, that's right, yeah, I'm getting married. (laughs) Sometimes we can get so obsessed with, we've got a day that signifies our relationship with God, a day that we don't, do any work in and we might be better than you because we've got a day and you've got the wrong day but it's all about the relationship that God has given us this time to have a relationship it's not that we can say oh we got the sign, I got the ring, I'm married I'm married, I might be the most terrible husband and my wife might just not like me and we're about to split up but I'm married, I got it, I got it I'm married, I'm one of the married people out there God wants us to enjoy the Sabbath, rest with him. You know, it's one of the most wonderful things on a Friday night when I get time to spend with my wife and my Lord. You know, it's so, so hectic during the week sometimes that I don't get a chance to read my Bible much. And you know something? When it comes to Sabbath, I seem to have a hunger for it. You know, it's like I'm famished for the Bible. I need to sit down and read it because I need to be fed from it. It's my spiritual food. And it's the day. Remember how I said that God made the first six days and put things in it. The seventh day, God put himself in it. Because some people may say, oh, look, it doesn't really matter what day. But it does. God said, on the Sabbath, it's a special day where I'm in it, where I can spend time with you. I can spend time with